Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Brian Shapiro, a scientific content specialist at ATCC. Thank you for joining us for the latest installment in the ATCC Excellence in Research webinar series entitled EMT MET Reporter Cell Lines Elevating Biological Models of Metastasis, presented by Diana Douglas. Ms. Douglas is a senior biologist at ATCC. In this presentation, Ms. Douglas will provide an overview on epithelial mesenchymal transition and its reverse, focusing on its role in cancer metastasis. She will then provide an overview of ATCC's EMT-MET models and highlight the compelling transition data that was revealed in their development and validation. If you have any questions for our speaker, please use the chat function available through the webinar program. All questions will be answered as time allows at the end of the presentation. The recorded webinar presentation will be archived on the ATCC website, www.atcc.org. So with that, I'd like to welcome Diana Douglas. Thanks, Brian. Uh, as mentioned, the title of today's webinar is EMT Reporter Cell Lines, Elevating Biological Models of Metastasis. So first, a little background on ATCC. ATCC is a nonprofit organization founded in 1925 with headquarters in Manassas, Virginia, and an R&D and Services Center in Gaithersburg, Maryland. It is the world's largest and most diverse biological materials and information resource for microbes. In Gaithersburg, we are an innovative R&D company featuring cell biology, advanced models, and gene editing, which is what today's webinar will focus on. So I'll look at the agenda for today's webinar. We'll go through a brief background on EMT, then we'll look at our Vomentin RFP reporter lines, followed by the ECAD hair and EMGFP reporter lines, and then conclusions. To introduce today's topic, which is gene-edited EMT reporter lines, I'll start with a brief background on EMT. So epithelial to mesenchymal transition, or EMT, and mesenchymal to epithelial transition, or MET, are involved in many normal and important processes such as implantation, developmental functions like embryogenesis and organogenesis, as well as wound healing, tissue regeneration, and organ fibrosis. So EMT and MET can also become unregulated. This leads to disease and abnormal tissue growth. This unregulated state has been implicated in cancer progression and metastasis. To take a closer look at EMT and cancer metastasis, so during EMT, cells display a progressive loss of epithelial features and gain of mesenchymal features. So rather than it being a binary process involving a complete conversion from the epithelial to mesenchymal or reverse, cells undergoing EMT display an array of, dyna of dynamic intermediate states a phenotype that has been referred to as partial EMT. So EMT can be viewed as a continuum. Cells exhibit epithelial, intermediate, or mesenchymal features and can move through all these states multiple times during disease progression. When cells begin to undergo EMT in response to an EMT signal, they lose epithelial characteristics, such as the columnar morphology and cell adhesion, and gain more mesenchymal phenotype, such as an elongated morphology, loss of polarity, and increased motility which allows them to invade. Along with phenotypic changes, there is also a change in the transcription factors and genetic, and genetic markers they express. Epithelial cells typically express markers such as E. cadherin, ZO1, and cytokeratin, while mesenchymal cells usually express vomentin, NCAD, ZEB1, and SNAIL. So looking at this diagram in more detail, Normal cells begin to reactivate EMT, and that allows for the development of the primary tumor site and dissemination to the first metastasis. Often, MET is then reactivated, and this leads to the development of the secondary tumor and distal metastasis sites. So because EMT and MET are so heavily implicated in cancer metastasis, and there is still so much to learn about these processes, ATCC sought to provide researchers with gene-edited EMT and MET reporter cell lines that can be used to monitor cellular status changes in real time and as a platform for drug development. One of the novel aspects of our lines is that the commonly used EMT marker genes in our system are tagged with a fluorescent protein to allow real-time tracking of transition. We currently have six gene-edited EMT or MET reporter cell lines, 
three of which have already launched and three that are in progress and will be available soon. So three of our lines are tagged with mesenchymal vomincin RFP and three with epithelial ECAD hair and EMGFP. So our collection includes lung, colorectal, pancreatic, and breast cancer lines. And we will get all of these lines in more detail throughout the webinar. In addition to the fluorescent tag, another aspect of our line that sets them apart from other models is the editing method. Rather than introducing a transgene that can have confounding effects on gene expression, such as indel creation, disruption of endogenous gene function, or unstable expression of the transgene, we use CRISPR-Cas9 technology for precision editing. In our lines, the knock-in is introduced only at the endogenous locus of the gene, leaving it intact, such that it is expressed from the native promoter. So this allows for a more accurate representation of physiological state. This schematic further details the editing process. This example illustrates the process for one of our, for one of our momentum knock-in lines, but the editing process is very similar for all of our lines, for both RFP and EMGFP tagged reporters. So we'll start with the wild type allele from our cell line of interest in panel one, with the location of the cutting site, which is just before the stop codon in the last exon. Then we introduce Cas9, our guide RNA, and our donor, which is shown in panel two, Cas9 induces a double-stranded break, so the wild-type allele undergoes homologous recombination with the knock-in donor. And then the last panel shows a correctly integrated knock-in allele with the fluorescent tag inserted adjacent to the reporter. After gene editing, all of our reporter lines are thoroughly verified at the genomic transcription and translational levels. This slide shows verification at the genomic level. We use junction PCR and Sanger sequencing at the homology arms. So this technique ensures that the knock-in is integrated at the correct locations and without any unintended in the formation. We further verify our edits at the mRNA level through RT-PCR and protein level through co-localization, immunocytochemistry, and off-target analysis. So for mRNA verification, we make RNA and run RT-PCR. Bands are then extracted from an agarose gel and sequenced to confirm the knock and sequence is correct at the transcript level. For the protein level, we look at intrinsic marker expression along with antibody stain marker expression. So the overlay or co-localization of the fluorescent stains indicates the marker is being expressed at the protein level as well. And we also make sure there is no off-target cutting occurring elsewhere. After we have verified our editing, we use a number of induction or transition assays and biofunctional assays to further characterize our reporter lines. So now we'll take a look at some of the data from these reporter cell lines. So the first example we will look at is the HCT116 Vomentin RFP EMT line, which is a colorectal cancer model. And the first functional readout we look at in our reporter lines is a change in morphology upon induction, as this is one piece of data that suggests the transition. So HCT116 cells are induced to EMT with a microRNA200 inhibitor. Minus EMT indicates control cells, while plus EMT indicates in cells induced with the inhibitor. And you can see in the image that the cells transition from an epithelial phenotype to a more mesenchymal phenotype. This change is characterized by a loss of tight junctions and spreading out of cells and the loss of polarity. Next, we wanna see an increase in intrinsic marker expression upon induction. So this is where the fact that our reporter lines have a fluorescent tag really comes into play. We are able to easily visualize cell transition status in the cells. In this case, we should see an increase in RFP tagged mesenchymal marker of omentin. Again, on the left, we have our control and on the right, induced cells. So looking at the image before induction, there's almost no omentin expression indicating an epithelial state. Then after induction, we see an eightfold increase in omentin RFP expression indicating a transition to a more mesenchymal status. In addition to looking at intrinsic momentum in RFP expression, we also look for a decrease in an epithelial marker as cells transition from E to M. For the HCT line, we also measured ECAT hair and expression upon induction. The image clearly shows a significant decrease in expression and a loss of membrane localization. ECAT hair and expression quantification shows an approximately 20-fold decrease upon induction. Another option for quantitative analysis is EMT marker gene expression by DDPCR. Here we synthesized cDNA from induced HCT cells and, sub and subjected them to PCR with target-specific primers. 
The decrease in E-cadherin expression along with increase in vomintin ZEB1 and ZEB2, all of which are well-known mesenchymal markers, further indicates a mesenchymal transition. To add versatility to our EMT reporter portfolio, we also have an MET Vimentin RFP reporter line and the MDA MB231 Vimentin RFP line, which is a breast cancer model. Cells are induced to MET with U0126, which is a highly selective MAPK inhibitor. And literature has reported this is an effective means of inducing MET transition in MDA cells. So here you can see the mesenchymal to epithelial morphology change as cells transition from spread out cells lacking polarity on the left to more tightly packed cells with columnar morphology on the right. In these cells, we are looking for a decrease in endogenous momentum since cells are transitioning away from mesenchymal to epithelial. So this image shows that induced cells display a significant decrease in momentum expression upon MET. In addition to the induction and transition assays we conduct on all of the reporter lines, we also look at biofunctional characterization. These next two slides show examples of biofunctional data from our A549 lung cancer, Vomentin RFP EMT line. The first piece of biofunctional data we look at is invasion. Invasion is a key characteristic of EMT transition. As cells become more mesenchymal, their invasive capability should increase, which helps them disseminate and metastasize. So in this line, EMT is induced by TGF-beta for three days. We then measured invasion using a transwell invasion assay, and then the image examples of invading cells are marked with red arrows. So for A549, we can see about a threefold increase in invasion upon EMT induction. Another exciting piece of biofunctional data comes from drug testing. For the A549 reporter line, we use two small molecule EMT inhibitors to block transition. Two pathways associated with EMT were targeted, TGF-beta and SRC, using A8301 and PP1, respectively. A8301 is a TGF-beta kinase activin receptor-like kinase inhibitor that blocks phosphorylation of SMAD2 and inhibits TGF-beta-induced epithelial to mesenchymal transition. PP1 is a potent and selective SRC family protein tyrosine kinase inhibitor. So SRC has been shown to play a role in e hair regulation and epithelial to mesenchymal transition. Increased SRC activity promotes EMT, while SRC inhibition suppresses it. So on day zero, A549 vomentin RFP cells were seeded with and without stem ex vivo EMT induction supplement, along with the respective DMSO or drug dose. RFP expression was monitored for five days and then quantified and, plot and plotted on day five. Both inhibitors were effective in blocking EMT. A8301 shows a dose-dependent reduction in EMT, as evidenced by the reduction in RFP fluorescence intensity. At the highest dose, EMT is almost completely blocked. PP1 also displays a dose-dependent decrease in EMT. So this data highlights the opportunities these models present in the field of drug development and drug testing. As some researchers prefer to study e heron as their marker chain of interest, we also, three, we also have three e heron EMGFP lines that will be coming soon. So BT474 actually launches tomorrow, and the other two will be available in early 2020. The first e EMGFP line we will look at is the pancreatic cancer model PANC1 e EMGFP MET. So as with our Vomentin RFP reporters, the first thing we look at is morphology change upon induction. In this case, we are able to induce MET with microRNA 200 treatment, and we see a transition from a mesenchymal phenotype as seen in the top panels to a more epithelial phenotype seen in the bottom panels. In terms of intrinsic reporter expression, we are looking at epithelial marker ECAT heron now. So in the pink one line, we see a significant increase in ECAT expression as, sales, as cells transition from mesenchymal to epithelial. So we quantified this increase to be greater than twofold. Our second marker in the ECAD EMGFP lines is a mesenchymal marker. For this reporter line, we use SNAIL. SNAIL is a transcription factor that promotes the repression of ECAD heron. So you can see that upon MET induction, SNAIL expression decreases by about 60%, further indicating a transition away from a mesenchymal phenotype to an epithelial phenotype. 
Biofunctional data for this line shows a decrease in the cell's invasive capabilities upon induction to MET. Using a transwell invasion assay, we found an approximately six-fold decrease in average number of invasive cells. We have two additional ECAT EMG of P lines that will soon be available. The first of which is the BT474 breast cancer ECAD EMGFP EMT line. Again, the addition of this line adds variety of the, to the portfolio by, by providing an ECAD EMGFP EMT model in contrast to the PANK1 MET line. In this line, cells can be induced to EMT with stem ex vivo EMT induction supplement. You can see the minus EMT control cells on the left are very epithelial in nature and then adopt a much more mesenchymal phenotype upon EMT induction. The BT474 ECAD EMGFP EMT reporter cell line also displays a very obvious intrinsic marker change. The ECAD heron expression decreases significantly, about threefold, as cells are induced to EMT transition. This is the final model we'll be looking at today. The MCF10A ECAD EMGFP reporter line is a breast epithelial line that can be induced, that can be induced to EMT with stem ex vivo EMT inducing supplement. So a morphology change is evident upon induction. The control cells on the left are epithelial in nature, packed closely together and displaying an apical basal polarity. After EMT induction, the cells on the right begin to spread out and lose their polarity. There's also a marker change associated with EMT induction in the MCF10A cells. In the panels on the left, we see a decrease in intrinsic e heron expression as cells transition away from an epithelial phenotype to a mesenchymal phenotype. And the panels on the right show the cells increasing their expression of mesenchymal markers, vomentin and fibronectin upon induction. The final piece of data shows an example of a different type of migration or invasion assay. For MCF10A, we performed a wound healing assay. So a scratch was made after six days of induction on a confluent monolayer, and images were taken at 0, 16, and 24 hours after scratching. EMT-induced cells displayed a significant increase in motility. You can see the induced cells moving in to gradually close the scratch or wound. We also quantified the number of migrating cells and found about a tenfold increase upon induction. So in conclusion, all this data gives an overview of the EMT and MET reporter cell lines created by ATCC scientists using CRISPR-Cas9 editing. Through the use of precision editing technology, we have created reporter lines that have a fluorescent tag on the reporter gene while leaving the endogenous locus intact. All of the reporter lines have been thoroughly validated at the genomic transcription and translational levels. And following verification, EMT and MET reporter lines were further characterized with induction or transition assays as well as biofunctional analysis. So these lines provide a novel tool for researchers to monitor cellular status changes in real time, to further understand the mechanism behind EMT and MET, and as a platform for drug discovery. So for more information about any of our EMT or MET lines, please visit the website at atcc.org EMT. And I just want to say thank you to the R&D department here in Gaithersburg and to everyone listening, and we look forward to your feedback and questions. Well, thank you, Diana. In just a few moments, we will begin our Q&A session. Please use the chat function available through the webinar program to submit your questions. The recorded webinar presentation will be available on demand on the ATCC website at www.atcc.org.